Hello everyone and welcome to this week's reviews. Today I'm going to review a film far beyond my own demographic. Did it work for me? Does it work for its target audience? I'll try to explain that as I take a look at the French animated film Ballerina. Or as it's apparently called in the United States, Leap. Oh Weinstein Company and your wacky retitling of films that did not need new titles to begin with. Ballerina, like I said, is a movie I'm of two minds about. Looking at it with a critical eye, it's got quite a number of problems. The biggest one may be the English language dub. The dialogue is overly simplistic and the voice acting is not much better. With the exception of Dane DeHaan, oddly enough, everyone is downplaying and lack the proper energy necessary in bringing life to these characters. The characters themselves are also fairly one note through most of the film. There's not a whole lot of character development in the story, though a couple of seemingly antagonistic characters do make sudden turns. The humor is not that successful, mostly relying on obvious slapstick, though that may be due to the dub. I really wanted to find a remote to change the audio settings. The animation on the characters is serviceable enough, but it was the backgrounds and dancing that most impressed me. When they stop talking and the ballet is performed, it is quite impressive. The action sequences also utilize the camera angles well, and you really feel the size of Paris during that period when the Eiffel Tower was still under construction. They also managed to introduce some genuine stakes in the third act. After leaving the screening, while I was ultimately mixed on the film as a whole, it hit me that I'm probably not the turd audience for it. Sometimes it's important to acknowledge when something is not made for you. This is not a family film like we come to expect from Pixar or Laika or Blue Sky. This is a children's film aimed specifically at seven-year-old girls who like ballet. That's the audience who will most likely enjoy it. I'm somebody in my 20s who honestly finds ballet kind of boring. So this film was probably not for me. Next up is a dramedy with a cast that includes Anna Kendrick, Stephen Merchant, and Lisa Kudrow. Table 19. Table 19 starts off decently enough with some humorous comedic banter between lead characters as they sit at the table at this wedding reception. Stephen Merchant gets the biggest laughs out of all of them and Anna Kendrick is her usual charming self. However, around 30 minutes in, the script takes an awkward turn into dramatic territory, and it just does not work. The dialogue becomes unnatural and completely full of itself. This is definitely the sort of film that thinks it's smarter and more meaningful than it actually is. It's not a terribly long film, but it sure feels like it is the more it chugs along. I never found myself caring all that much about the predicament they found themselves in, and I certainly did not understand why Kendrick still continued to pine for her ex-boyfriend, who frankly is a horrible person. If they just kept it as a simple, single location comedy, it would have had its charms. However, it did not earn the right to go all dramatic in the second and third acts, and I cannot wait for it to end. Thank you for watching this week's reviews, and I'll see you next time.